This is Ross for Castanato interviewing Terry McGovern at the November 2019 Pasadena TuneCon Convention. So now, what projects are you currently working on? Well, I'm not uh, limited to disclose that. And uh, Terry's not here right now. Oh. So well, uh, sometimes we have to sort of keep him under wraps. Ah, I he see. gets a little excited, big crowds like this. So he's up in his room. Uh, all right. <laughs> I'm not doing anything, Rossler, uh, other than coming to cons and signing things. I live up in Northern California, but I am hoping to start getting into anime and 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 coming to L.A. more often, so I can do. I I, I had for I had quit doing uh, animation voices years ago until Neary, uh, uh, Alexis' wife. Uh, son called me and said uh, why don't you come and do uh, some comic cons with us and I did and I, I just I love it and so, so I'm going to start working again too cool yeah. very nice okay and so did you have any favorite cartoons before you started voice acting yes anything by Tex Avery or, or uh, Chuck Jones and I had a little part in Mrs. Doubtfire and so that day Chuck Jones was on set and Robin was great to be around. I, I, I loved him. Nobody didn't love Robin. Yeah. But uh, I kind of knew him already. You know, I mean, Robin and I were yeah. friends because yeah. uh, we were both in the same area and we would hang together and stuff. But to know, to meet Chuck Jones, the greatest, he and Tex Avery and Mel Blanc, they were Looney Tunes. And nothing when I was growing up rivaled Looney Tunes. Uh, Leopold Stokowski, did you ever see that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, remember with Bugs with yeah. the glove yeah, that's directing right. Leopold, oh, yeah. the tenor? Oh, and yeah. And then the, 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 uh, uh, the dome of the Hollywood Bowl starts yeah. to crack. Yeah. I mean, that was... And, and there I am. I'm talking to Chuck Jones. All day I had him. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was fun. So cool. I'm like you. You know, I'm a fan. Cool. Why would you say those were your favorites? Why were they my favorites? Yeah. Well, because there was nothing to compare them to in, in, at that time. I mean, there were... It, it, this is going to be strange. You can research it. When I was a kid, which we're talking about uh, uh, around 27 BC, okay, 1950s, when you would go to a movie as a kid to see, uh, you know, action movies, double features, and you, it was a godsend to your parents because you'd be there the whole day, all the kids, you know, and they, they would say a double feature, a serial, which was a cliffhanger, and 17 cartoons. And I could never figure out why it was 17. But the distributor, that became a trademark, and so that's the way he packaged them, 17 cartoons. And I would sit and watch every single one of them and study them. Without You don't even know you're studying them as a kid. You're, you're, you're absorbing, right? Yeah. It's just coming into your ears and, and, and suddenly, you're out on the street with your buddies and you, you start doing the voices. Yeah. And that's what, that's what started it. Yeah. Just enjoying the cartoons as a kid. Cool. Very nice. And what was the first voice that you did? Oh, that's an interesting question. Uh, it was probably somebody I knew, an uncle or a teacher or something. But the first celebrity voice I did... Uh, I think the first one I did really well and got paid to do it was Sly Stallone and I, I don't know why but I mean that, that's recent but that was the one that I, uh, I kind of you know made a little bit of a name for myself and uh, you know as, as an entertainer doing Sly but then uh, being able to invent this thing the, the launch pad voice was that was the greatest thrill of all. Yeah. There was nothing's ever equaled that. Because I not only got the audition, I, I did the voice and got the audition, then I was, uh, uh, I was called into conferences at Disney to discuss how he behaved, yeah. how he might walk, how he might talk. And I had no idea that that went on in animation, but at Disney, they took it very seriously. And they wanted the actor who was doing it to, to contribute. Isn't that cool? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. What was it like to work on those? The best. Cool. Yeah, I mean, you go, suddenly you're working with the giant, you're working at the giant mouse house. Cool. And you go over there and 
everything was very, very lush and, you know, the best equipment, the best everything. Oh, yeah. very nice. And before we go, can you please talk about the time that you met and interviewed Don DeLuise? Oh, oh uh, yeah, Don DeLuise, we were, uh, we were uh, uh, I was working on a film crew up there for a show, a uh, television show called Evening. And I got to interview him. He was in a film with Mel Brooks called Silent Movie. And so we did the interview silent. Oh, very nice. And just with flat, you know, with cards in between. I'd say something to him, then you'd see the card with a question, and then it would cut to him, and he was doing insane faces, and but no voices. It was silent. Ah. Wasn't that clever? Yeah, really cool. <laughs> really clever. Rossiter, man, thank you so My much. My pleasure. Thank you for allowing me to interview you. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, bye. Well, there you have it. That was Ross Castanato interviewing Terry McGovern at the November 2019 Pasadena Tune Con Convention.